From West Virginia Public Broadcasting. Support for the legislature today has been provided by the following. The High Technology Foundation, headquartered at the I-79 Technology Park in Fairmont. Online at wvhtf.org. Connecting West Virginia families and businesses through high-speed Internet services. Learn more about connecting at Frontier.com. At the legislature today, the Senate considered several transportation bills. One of them was the governor's bill to take tax credits away from alternative-fueled vehicles. It will now be considered by the House, and if it agrees, no more state tax incentives to buy a car that runs on certain alternative fuels. The credit still applies to vehicles that will use natural gas. And we'll meet Jessica Lynch on the 10-year anniversary of her rescue and becoming a household name. This is the legislature today. And good evening, I'm Beth Voorhees. The House of Delegates passed a wide range of bills during the morning floor session today, including one related to child pornography and another which would protect the privacy of personal electronic data for employees and applicants for employment. Dave Mistich explains. The House passed 11 of 12 bills on third reading during the morning floor session, including House Bill 2550. That bill would create the criminal offense of receiving materials depicting minors in sexually explicit conduct and would enhance the federal criminal penalties. Judiciary Chair Tim Miley further explained the provisions of the bill. This bill establishes increased penalties for the possession, distribution, and sending of child pornography by increasing the penalties for possessing, exhibiting, sending, or distributing more than 500 or more digital, photographic, or video images depicting minors engaged in explicit sexual activity. It imposes enhanced penalties if the offender was previously convicted of a sexual offense in which the victim was under the age of 18, and it imposes harsher penalties for persons convicted of second or subsequent offenses. House Bill 2550 passed 96 to 0. Also passed was House Bill 2966, which is also known as the Internet Privacy Protection Act. Again, Delegate Tim Miley with an explanation from the floor. This bill creates the Internet Privacy Protection Act that prohibits employers from requesting or requiring an employee or job applicant to disclose a username, password, or other means for accessing the employee's or job applicant's personal account or service. The act does provide, however, for the right of employers to investigate whether an employee has, without authorization, downloaded an employer's proprietary information or financial data. House Bill 2966 was also passed on a 96 to 0 vote. Governor Tomlin's bill that would transfer control of the Salem and Parkersburg Juvenile Correctional Centers to the Commissioner of Corrections was also considered on the House floor. After a brief explanation from Delegate Miley, House Minority Leader Tim Armstead asked for clarifications on House Bill 3086. There's just been some questions that have been raised about what actually occurs and what will happen to the, to the juveniles that are already in this facility. Are they are going to be transferred, as I understand, is, is there capacity within existing facilities, and if so, what, you know, what will take place as a result of this? The juveniles are plan, planned on being transferred to other juvenile facilities around the state for which there is capacity. There, there, there is one building on Salem's campus that houses sex offenders, and they won't be transferred immediately, but the others will be. House Bill 3086 passed 95 to 1. Up for passage in the House tomorrow will be House Bill 2866, which would provide an exception to allow a resident to discharge a firearm in a lawful manner within 500 feet of his or her home. House Bill 3043 will also be considered. That bill seeks to include methane monitoring equipment as eligible safety equipment for tax credit purposes. For the Legislature Today, I'm Dave Mistich in the House of Delegates. As 28 bills came before the Senate for a vote today, most were passed unanimously. But as Ashton Mara reports, a few pieces of legislation saw divisions among senators, much of which came along party lines. Senate Bill 185 relating to alternative fuel motor vehicles and qualified refueling infrastructure tax credits, third reading of the bill. 
Senate Bill 185 is a bill introduced on behalf of Governor Tomlin and deals with tax credits for alternatively fueled vehicles. When first considered by the Senate Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure, the bill was amended to continue the tax credit for electric and flex fuel vehicles, or cars using 85 percent ethanol mixed gasoline, but was amended in the Committee on Finance to reflect its original language. Beginning April 15, 2013, it limits the availability of this credit to vehicles using compressed natural gas, liquefied natural gas, and liquefied petroleum gas. Transportation Committee Chair Senator Bob Beach says had electric and flex fuel vehicles been included in the tax credit, it would have cost the state nearly $10 million. The bill passed with only one vote against it, Senator Craig Blair of Jefferson County. Another bill first taken up by Beach's committee, Senate Bill 354, was also put to a vote today. The bill would require the Commissioner of Highways to conduct a study of alternative revenue sources of funding for construction and and maintenance of the state roads. Its sponsor, Senator Robert Plymel, told the committee the study would focus on taxation based on vehicle miles traveled instead of the current tax on the amount of fuel purchased. The bill also requires the commissioner to make recommendations to the legislature by January 31st, 2014 for a pilot, pilot project for alternative fuel funding. I urge the adoption of the bill. The bill passed on a 24 to 10 vote, with the Republican caucus and Democratic Senator Bob Williams voting against it. Senate Bill 553 is the Highway Design Build Pilot Program. It eliminates the limitation on the number of projects that can be undertaken under this program. It also removes the sunset provision. Under this piece of legislation, the pilot program passed in 2007 would become a permanent option for the Department of Transportation to use in the future construction of roads. Design build has already saved the state nearly $50 million since its start and was passed by the Senate today by a 30 to 4 vote. Senators Blair, Barnes, Carmichael and Seipolt, all members of the Republican Party, voted against it. Engrossed Senate Bill 470, permitting wine sale on Sunday mornings at fairs and festivals, third reading of the bill. The bill, supported by the Department of Agriculture, has a simple premise. The purpose of Senate Bill 470 is to permit wineries and farm wineries to sell wine and samples during the operating hours of licensed fairs and festivals, including the hours of 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Sundays. Mr. President, I encourage the adoption of this legislation. But seven senators didn't like the idea and voted against it. A resolution also introduced and unanimously supported Senate Concurrent Resolution 50 calls for Patriot Coal to pay its obligations to retirement funds for its former employees. A similar resolution was adopted by the House earlier in the session. The Senate's version came on the same day as the United Mine Workers Association rally in Charleston. For the legislature today, I'm Ashton Mara in the Senate. In a moment, we'll meet one of West Virginia's most notable veterans. First, here's a look at what's coming up in the Senate tomorrow. Among the bills up for passage in the Senate tomorrow, Senate Bill 22, to require health insurers to cover maternity services for all individuals who are participating in or receiving coverage under a policyholder's health insurance plan, if those services are covered under the policy. Under current West Virginia law, health insurers are not required to cover maternity services for dependents. Senate Bill 98, creating the Shale Research, Education, Policy, and Economic Development Center at West Virginia University. Senate Bill 118, to provide for special license plates stating, I support veterans. Senate Bill 466, to regulate the ownership of dangerous wild animals by creating a regulatory board, creating offenses, and establishing criminal and civil penalties. Senate Bill 515, to establish conditions for use of television receivers in vehicles and to exempt global positioning systems and mapping devices. Senate Bill 610, establishing that on July 1, 2013, the West Virginia Industrial Home for Youth shall be known as the Salem Correctional Center and transfer to the Division of Corrections. And Senate Bill 624, to ensure persons who are willfully not paying child support be sentenced to home confinement while either working, looking for work, or getting job training from Workforce West Virginia, instead of being confined in jail for a first offense. Ten years after a dramatic rescue from an Iraqi hospital, Jessica Lynch is celebrating freedom. 
In a news release, Governor Tomlin said of her, quote, our state's rich history of military service includes thousands of women and men who have served and sacrificed for our state and country. Jessica's story shines a spotlight on what it means to be a West Virginian who bravely wore the uniform. I'm grateful she continues to serve her state, working to help others achieve their dreams through education, unquote. And it is with those words that we welcome Jessica Lynch. Welcome, it's such a pleasure to meet you. Hi, well thank you for having me here. All right, well, what have you been thinking about today? I know you've been busy, but as you look 10 years ago today, that rescue, what have you been thinking about? Honestly, it's kind of a remembrance. It's, um, you know, this is the day that not only that I was found, but they also happened to find the other uh, soldiers who were killed uh, behind the, the uh, building mm -hmm. that I was mm -hmm. in. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a sad day, but it's also a joyful day. And, and honestly, I'm just, I'm feeling blessed today, mm -hmm. blessed to be here. Mm -hmm. Are you surprised that 10 years later, we all still remember? Yeah, actually I am. But you know, when people are thinking about my story, it you know, it gives me hope that people are still remembering that we have soldiers stationed throughout this world and that's what's important right now and, and we need to still pray and, and support them until they are home safely. <clears throat> Do you remember the rescue, the actual rescue itself? There was your famous line, I'm a soldier too. What happened next and what do you remember most? Yeah, I actually do remember that. Um, I remember laying in the bed and I had two Iraqi guards standing around me and uh, they kept going over, excuse me, they kept going over to the window and um, at that point I knew something was was about to happen. Um, you know, I could hear the vehicles and the airplanes starting to come in and, and noise were, <clears throat> noise was starting to, uh, to scatter mm -hmm. around and was this during the daytime or nighttime hours that this was night happening? night was yeah it was nighttime and um and then yeah i remember a lot of yelling and stuff going out on outside of my room and uh and then i heard the words where's where's private lynch and i knew at that moment whether it was good or bad i was the target and and i was praying for the the best mm -hmm. but at that point i really didn't know and uh, when they came inside of the room and, you know, a soldier looked at me and he ripped off his patch, American flag patch off of his arm and he handed it to me and said, we're American soldiers, we're here to take you home. And mm -hmm. the only thing I could think of at that moment was, yeah, I'm an American soldier too. Mm -hmm. Do you remember being carried away from the hospital, being put into vehicles, being put into an airplane? Do you yes. remember all of those yes, things? Yes, I do. I, I remember being taken off to Kuwait, and then after that, it got a little yeah, fuzzy. Yeah. yeah, just because of you know sedation, and they were trying to trying to get me to the point of where I was stable to to fly me to uh, Germany. Um, in the hospital. Was anybody ever able to speak English to you? They could speak broken English. There was a few that could, could speak broken English. And um, I was able to to find out a little bit of information that was happening, but uh, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't often. And when they didn't want me to know what they were saying, of course, mm -hmm. they were speaking Arabic. Mm -hmm. So now you've attended West Virginia University in Parkersburg and you have your teaching degree. What do you teach and where? I do. I'm a substitute teacher and I do Wood and Work County. Okay. And uh, I, I love it. I, I love going into the schools because that's where I am. I'm just Dakota's mommy, my daughter, you mm -hmm. know. I, I love going in there because the kids don't, they're too young. They don't they're, recognize they don't know me. Who yeah. You are. Yeah, exactly. So when I walk into those doors, I'm, you know, Miss Lynch, Dakota's mommy, and, and that's. I don't know, that's where I feel comfortable and, and the most pride. What grades do you substitute in? K through six. All right, all right. So, like getting back to the Iraq War, on the 10th anniversary of the beginning of the Iraq War, mm -hmm. a lot of political commentators looking back and asking whether or not this war was a mistake, or whether or not this war was necessary or unnecessary, or whether it was one that we had to fight. Where do you come down on that 10 years later and looking back at just this effort not only your role in it, but the effort itself. Do you yeah, think about that? I do actually, but you know, to say that it was worth it or not, I don't know. We've lost so many lives and that is what is most important. Yes, we got Saddam, mm -hmm. yes, we got Osama bin Laden, but on the other hand, we've lost so many lives and, and that, 
That's what's accountable. That's, that's what we should be thinking. Mm -hmm. The military is opening more combat positions to women. How do you mm -hmm. feel about that? I don't know. I'm in support of it. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think women are capable of doing anything that they set their mind to it. Um, you know, depending on the person, I think that's that's where it's going to come down to if if that person is capable of mm -hmm. actually doing the job. You probably it's, met some very capable women in your I time have, in the yeah, military. I have, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, you look at an individual and and you can tell whether they're fin physically or mentally capable of doing a job. So, yeah. you know, I think it de it depends on the on the person. It seems to me like you were in combat at Nazaria and near Basra. You were you were there. West Virginia colleges and universities are trying to become very friendly, veteran-friendly campuses. Sure. They're setting up special vet centers, mm -hmm. study classes, and a sensitivity toward how a young man or woman just coming out of the military and how they adjust to civilian life. Do you ever get to meet and talk with uh, veterans, young people coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan? I do, actually, yeah, yeah, what I do. Say? Well, you know, it, it's something that we can both relate to. You know, when you're talking to someone who's been over there and perhaps been through some of the same scenarios that you are, I mean, you just relate to them. And then if you're in college especially, you know, I went to Parkersburg where it is a very, you know, diverse. I mean, you've got everything from 18 to 50 year olds trying to get their degrees. And sure. of course, a lot of them are veterans. Um, so being in class and, and knowing that the work and the effort that they have to put into that, yeah, I mean, it's, it's something that I can relate to them. Mm -hmm. Can you give advice to any of them? Um, the legislature had a survey done of state's veterans over the summer, and they found a shocking amount of depression and post-traumatic stress disorder. What advice do you give to veterans when you meet them and talk to them? What do you say to them? Find a support system, because that's going to be their main, main thing. Luckily for me, I have plenty of support and love that surrounds me every day and that's what keeps me going. Um, so I definitely would encourage them, whether it's through a VA clinic or even if it's a spouse or a mother, you know, some kind of family, that that will help. That's the help most relieve. important thing is yeah, that absolutely. support structure. Sure. Yeah, because a lot of them don't want to talk about what they went through or saw or happened to them over there. And that's understandable, but um, I think definitely just having somebody that you can lean on and cry if you need to, that, mm -hmm. that's what's mm -hmm. most important. That's good advice. A reception tonight at the Culture Center in yes. your honor. Yes. Some memorabilia on display there. What, uh, what will we see? Um, there's just a wide range of everything from, you know, my military uniform to a Daytona 500 jacket that I wore, um, a couple of my medals, um, some things from the White House memorabilia. So, I mean, I think it's gonna be a wide range of, of everything. There's uh, quilts and Afghans that people have sent me over the years, so we have included that, and uh, even notes and stuff that kids have, have sent to me over the years. Mm -hmm. 10 years of collecting things, yes. of being Jessica Lynch. Yes. The fame, how did you cope with being a, a soldier from Wirt County, West Virginia, to being probably the best known female war veteran in the country. How did you cope with that? Again, a lot of support. Oh, really? Because I have had a lot of supporters, but then I've also had a lot of criticism. So mm -hmm. um, definitely <clears throat> knowing who to trust and who you can rely on has been my biggest help. Um, yeah, because I've I've dealt with it all, and and this isn't like something that I have sought after or knew that was going to happen. This all just kind of fell in my lap one day. So um, definitely having having people surround me and and keep me grounded. That's, mm -hmm. that's <clears throat> it's helped. How is your family? We feel like we got to know them during the ordeal. Your mom and your dad, your yeah. brother and your sister. Yeah, everyone's Are they all great. well? Everybody's yeah. well? Everybody's still in Palestine? <laughs> no, not actually. We've kind of scattered out, but um, oh, okay. th we're definitely all still still in touch. We're a very close-knit family, and that's how we like it. And mm -hmm. It's not a day that goes by that we're not calling my mom 500 times or she's calling us. So, <laughs> you know, it, it's good to have the family still connected. That's right. What about the uh, Iraqi national who alerted American forces that you were at the hospital mm -hmm. because he was granted asylum in the United States? Yes. 
Where is he now, and do you still keep in touch? I don't, sadly. Um, you know, I wish him the best, whatever adventures he is on right now. But you know, sadly, I haven't haven't spoke to him since. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, I do. I wish him the best, and and I thank him for his efforts and and rescuing me, mm -hmm. getting me rescued. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the future hold? More teaching, a permanent job, not just a substitute's job? Well, I'm getting my master's right now, so um, hopefully once I graduate from, from that, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I would love to get into teaching, but you know, I don't know. It's hard to tell where where life will take me. It's, it's had a funny road these past 10 years, so. I don't, I don't really know yet. You're getting a master's in education then? No, actually in communication studies through WVU. Oh, all right. Yeah. Then communication studies. Communication studies. So maybe broadcasting? I, well, it's a little bit different than, well, <laughs> than communication. Different than yeah, that. yeah. Communication studies? What kind yes. of communication studies? Um, it just teaches you how to be an organizational uh, and teaching you to work well with and communicating with uh, your peers or your bosses and, and mm -hmm. so it's more along that kind of communication not really so I, know, I, know, I thought right? you were going to go into broadcasting <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> well Jessica Lynch it has been a pleasure meeting you yeah. and thank you so much for joining us on the legislature today we appreciate it well thank you for having me here All thank right. you good luck to you thanks and now here's a look at what's coming up in the house tomorrow Among the bills up for passage in the House tomorrow, House Bill 2866, to allow a resident of a house to discharge a firearm in a lawful manner within 500 feet of the house in which the person lives, if no other dwelling is located within 500 feet of the person shooting. House Bill 3043, to define eligible safety property as including methane monitoring equipment. House Bill 3160, providing for a pilot initiative on governance of schools jointly established by adjoining counties. Among the bills on second reading, House Bill 2357, to require the Supreme Court to develop an educational diversion program for minors accused of sexting. House Bill 2513, the governor's bill to improve enforcement of laws against drugged driving. House Bill 2544, to improve state emergency preparedness. The bill requires the Commissioner of Highways to erect signs on the interstate highways and other roadways relating to directions to emergency shelters. It requires the Office of Emergency Services to coordinate with local radio and television stations to broadcast public service announcements with information as to the location of emergency shelters. The bill provides tax credits for use of natural gas or propane-fueled emergency generators and the bill provides a protection from civil or criminal liability to persons who donate food during times of emergencies. House Bill 2805, to make the West Virginia Supreme Court of Appeals public campaign financing pilot program a permanent program, and to remove language that violates the United States Constitution. And House Bill 2946, to permit the sale of alcoholic beverages on Sunday mornings beginning at 10 o'clock by restaurants, private clubs, and licensees that sell wine to be consumed on the premises. And this has been the Legislature Today. Tomorrow, we'll speak with representatives from the West Virginia Coalition Against Domestic Violence, Sue Gillian and Pam Gillenwater. Also on Wednesday, we'll welcome Gaylene Miller and Angela Vance with AARP uh, with the issues pertaining to senior citizens at this session. And we welcome your comments and questions about the issues at this legislative session. You can email us at feedback at wv pubcast.org. That's feedback at wvpubcast.org. And full episodes of the legislature today are available on our website. I'm Beth Voorhees. Thanks for joining us. Good night.
Support for the legislature today has been provided by the following. The High Technology Foundation, headquartered at the I-79 Technology Park in Fairmont. Online at wvhtf.org. Connecting West Virginia families and businesses through high-speed Internet services. Learn more about connecting at Frontier.com.